Hi, this is Audrey and this is a mid-year catch-up. Welcome back or probably welcome because there's only 46 of you. So chances are you're probably new. Um, this is going to be a mid-year book freak out tag. A little bit of a wrap up of everything I've read. I'm out of focus again. Sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's crack into things. First of all, I had read uh, 40, I think I've read 45 by now. This is a refilm. Um, but I know that it's halfway through June, so does that even count? Basically, I read about 40 books. Um, a lot of them were short, a lot of them for uni. But first, before we do the mid-year book freak out tag, I'm going to take you through some of the most the books I found most interesting, and then we will crack into it. Sorry if I'm looking down. I've got my iPad on my desk. It's got the questions on it. Actually, I might move that. Okay, <laughs> let's go into the books I found most interesting this year. First up, we have The Recruiting Officer by George Farquhar. This is a play, I think it was written in the 1600s. Um, I read it for a class. I found it really interesting. It wasn't particularly amazing. I think I gave it three stars, but I did actually find it funny. And I usually it never happens um, in books, especially in plays. I usually hate plays, um, but I read it all. Turns out I only had to read the first act, read it all. Really liked it. Three stars. Next, we have I Can't Breathe by Matt, uh, by Matt Tybee, I'm going to say. Um, this is obviously rele rele very relevant um, for what's happening at the moment, but this book came out, I think, in 2014 or 2016, um, and it central focus, 2017, sorry, and its central focus is the Eric Garner case, but it walks through a few cases um, of police brutality against, against people of colour. Um, and the institutions that created that. Then we have Destroy She Said, which is a short novella by Marguerite Duras. This is really interesting. Um, we read it alongside the film, which is under the same name. Um, it is translated from the French and it's really interesting. I gave that four stars. Then we have Chess by Steven Zweig. This is a short story was really good. I gave it three stars. I'll move through things quickly. Next we have the tea bird, tea bird, tea girl of Hummingbird Lane and I gave this uh, four stars and it's by Lisa Seen. I read it for Bookstar and this was really, really good as well. I'm just going to go through things really quickly. And then we have The Deep by River Sullivan. I gave this four stars. Um, I read it really, really quickly. It has a little statement at the back that's like, you probably just read this really quickly and you want to go back. And I was like, everything just fell off my desk and I was like yeah basically but I really liked it then going into the media book freak out tag the first question is your favorite books so far now I have quite a few of these but the first one I have is my favorite favorite most favorite of the year and that is Daisy Joes and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid this is the only Taylor Jenkins Reid I um, have read. I listened to it on audiobook, which is really surprising that I liked it because I never like when I listen to things on audiobook, but I think it is because of the full cast of characters that actually made it really, really interesting. And especially, I think it works with this particular book because it is um, meant to be written as an oral history. So I think it kind of makes most sense to listen to it as an audiobook. I don't have a copy of it, obviously, but I gave that five stars. Then we have Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This is my first fictional Murakami. I read his um, non-fiction book, What I Talk When I Talk About Running, a while ago, and I really liked this too. I gave this five stars as well. It was really good. Oh, I have it here. There we go. This is my copy. I know I'm out of focus, but I'm just... Next, we have Paul Takes the Form of a Mortal Girl by Andrea Lawler. This I gave four stars. I read it for my book club. Um, it was not at all what I expected. Um, as the cover says, smut. Yes, it is. Um, I really liked it. I really liked it. It is about a character who um, the author themselves, Andrea Lawler, is a non-binary individual. And the book is about a character who can actually shapeshift um, and physically change the way that their body appears um, in terms of gender at a whim and it was really really interesting um yeah that's all <laughs> then we have another book i read for a book club and this is my dark vanessa by kate elizabeth russell i thought this was really interesting um and it kind of follows a weird trend i found this year of me reading books that had um either incest or 
parent-teacher relationships. That's not a spoiler. It's on the back. Uh, parent-teacher relationship, a parent-student relationship, that is. This book has no incest in it, thank fully, because I don't think I could have taken that as well. It is a really harrowing book about, I gave it five stars, um, if I didn't say, about a girl flashes back from um, her in the past when she was kind of beginning this relationship with the teacher and her as a 30 year old woman kind of looking back at the relationship and just kind of starting to see what was wrong with it. <laughs> then we have The Melancholy of Resistance by Laszlo Krasna Hawkeye. I really love this. I read it for uni as well. Um, we had a lot of really good uni favorites this year. And I gave this four stars. It is translated from the Hungarian. I've read a few translated books this year. Next up, we have my absolute favorite book of all time, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is not the first time that I've read this book. I read it for school as well, but I uh, was lucky enough to be able to study it again um, and so got a chance to read it because I don't tend to reread books. Even if I really, really loved them, I won't, I won't reread something. So it was a real blessing to be able to um, study this and give me a chance to go back over it. This book is absolutely full of highlighting on every single page, just because I love it so much. Then we have I Am Not Sydney Poitier by Percival Everett. This is my first Percival Everett. I gave it five stars. It was hilarious. We read it alongside uh, the movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which um, features, uh, I was about to say features Percival Everett. It doesn't, it, fe it features Sidney Poitier. Um, and it's really good. So that's a very long answer to the first question. Next up we have the favorite sequel. Now I don't really read sequels. The only sequel I read this year was I read the entire of the Northern Lights trilogy or the Golden Compass, whatever the name of the trilogy is called by Philip Pullman. Um, I was disappointed. I think I need to reread it, read it slower. Um, I have a habit of reading things too quickly, but maybe it was because I hadn't read it as a child, so it didn't have that nostalgia. Something about it just wasn't my favorite. Um, so technically, those are the only sequels I read, and of them, probably The Amber Spyglass is my favorite, but I didn't, I didn't love it. I think that's just, again, my fault that I read it too quickly. So we'll see if I ever go back to it. Next we have new releases that you haven't read, but you want to. I have quite a few of these. First up, we have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. When her other book, The Mothers, came out, I really wanted to read it, but I never did. Now The Vanishing Half is out. It's got an equally beautiful cover, um, um, but unfortunately, Melbourne, where I am, is back in lockdown, and so you can't really browse bookstores. Um, you can still order online, obviously, but I kind of don't like doing that. And um, I had to buy a whole bunch of books for uni, which you'll see later up. So I haven't got around to buying anything new, especially because I have a whole shelf back there of books I haven't read. Then we have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. Um, I heard about this book on um, Reagan's channel, Bruce Project. It sounds really interesting. I haven't read anything by N.K. Jemisin before. I have, however, read a lot of Patrick Ness and I really, really want to read his book, Burn. Patrick Ness is one of my favorite authors. The Knife of Never Letting Go trilogy, or whatever that is called in full, um, is probably my favorite series I've ever read and I remember crying to it. In fact, I think there's a video somewhere up here of me crying to it, which is embarrassing, but if you've read the series, you'll understand. Next we have Most Anticipated Read for the Second Half of the Year. Now, my answer is Loveless by Alice Oseman, which I know has already come out, but technically if I'm going from the 1st of July, it, um, it is the second half of the year release. So I guess that does work. Um, and then we have A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I haven't read any Naomi Novik before, but it sounds really interesting. A little bit dark academia, a little bit of magic. That's what I like. Biggest disappointments. Now I have two of these and the first one is, I picked up the wrong book. The first one is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I first put this on my TBR maybe four years ago and I finally got a copy of it, luckily from the library. I'm glad I didn't buy it. Um, and I did not like it at all. I think I gave it two stars. It was too long. It's nearly, I think it's right on 600 pages. I think I would have liked it maybe if it was 300, 350. Um, I didn't like the main character. I thought the story was really compelling itself, but I did not like at all how Marisha Pessel made it. I thought the main character was extremely unlikable um, and in a lot of parts I wasn't a fan of the writing. Um, I thought it was a little bit expository. Expository? I think that's what I meant. Um, yeah, I didn't like it. And the other biggest disappointment was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Now this one I read on, I listened to an audiobook so that 
could be why. Um, I gave it a three stars, I think. I, po I, didn't, I didn't hate it. I think the reason why it's the biggest disappointment is because I was expecting to give it five stars. Um, it was definitely a five star prediction and it just wasn't. I think even if I read it in person, it wouldn't have been five stars, but it could have been a four, but it was still a big disappointment for me, unfortunately. Next, we have uh, my biggest surprise. Now this one I already mentioned is The Melancholy of Resistance by Laszlo Krasner Hawkeye. This is a translated book, which I usually don't love as much. This, however, was incredible. It was also a big surprise because it's written with a lot of really, really big sentences and it's quite obscure, um, which are all things that I enjoy, but I have a lot of trouble reading. So this was really good. However, the movie I did not like. The movie is um, made under the name The Werkmeister Harmonies and it was average, way too long. <laughs> Way too long considering the size of the book and it cut out major scenes. <laughs> Next we have my new favourite author and this is Haruki Murakami which is lucky because there are so many other books that Haruki Murakami has and this year for uni, this semester I mean, I have to read After the Quake. Not have to, I get to. Um, so I'm really really excited about that. The newest fictional crush, I am going to say Daisy Jones or Paul from Paul Takes the Form of a Model Girl. Um, yeah, I just really love these characters. I don't really get fictional crushes. Like, I don't... Not anymore. Um, especially not because I don't really read YA and I feel like that's where I usually would. Um, but I can see myself having a crush on these people if I met them. <laughs> then we have the newest favourite character. I'm not going to pick up the book again. From this, I have Paul from Paul Takes the Form, The Model Girl. I also had Ka... 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 From the name of the wind um not because i particularly loved him but because it is a huge book um i read it this year half audiobook half actual book um and i really enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to reading the second book now the reason why i've put him as one of my favorite characters is because um the reason the fact that i don't like fantasy very much and that i want to continue reading this means that there has to have been something good about it and while the writing was incredible as well i definitely enjoyed the character um of him. <laughs> Books that made you cry. Daisy Jones and the Six, 100%. I sobbed at the end of the audiobook of this. I was doing a puzzle and my boyfriend laughed at me. Books that made you happy. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. As I said, this is my favourite book of all time and while the book itself isn't necessarily happy, it made me happy that I was able to read it again. Most beautiful cover. For this is easy. We have On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean of Wong. He just announced on his Instagram that he's writing his second book, which I'm really excited about. Um, this probably should have gone on my favorites of the year as well. Another book I read for book club. Um, I, yeah, actually this should have gone on my favorites, this one. Um, but it was just beautiful and the cover is gorgeous. Um, and if you've got this cover, it's not focusing, but um, it's got that like velvety rubbery feel that I really like on hardbacks and the regular cover without the dust jacket on it is really beautiful as well. Now, finally, we have the question with the most amount of books, I think, and that is what books, uh, the final question, what books do you need to read before the end of the year? Now, as I mentioned, I have an entire shelf of TBRs. I have many things I need to read, but I think for this, I have to say this pile of books and a few others that I've ordered from Book Depository, these being the books I have to study for uni this semester. I'll probably make a whole video um, just on the books I'm studying. Jesus, I was off camera there. Um, a lot of them I'm really excited about, a lot of them I'm skeptical of, but those are definitely the books that I need to read by the end of the year, um, preferably by the end of August, which is hard because it is a big pile, so I think I know what I'm going to be reading in August, unfortunately. All of them, but that is it. I am, um, yeah, I'm excited with my pile. I'm excited with what I was able to read this year. I'm excited for what's coming up. Um, at the moment, I'm reading Shiver by Janji Ito, and I just finished Wilder Girls by Rory Power, which was a favourite, definitely, but I don't think it counts, especially because I've read it, you know, halfway through July. It definitely doesn't count, but it'll be on a, it'll be on a, um, a list for a future video. I'm doing The Reading Rush as you guys know, and by you guys, I mean all 46 of you, but... Keep, up, keep an eye out for all of my videos. Um, for that, I will either be daily vlogging or putting up a vlog at the end of the week of all of my things, but I'm very excited for that. And stay safe, 
wear a mask, keep reading.